The purpose of this video is to demonstrate a technique for mirroring and reversing a sequential mill tool path. Before we begin the technique, let's review the objects that are already in this file. I've defined an MCS mill here at this corner. That's my G54 for the as shown part. Here's the workpiece, and the blank is simply a 50 thousandths offset. The sequential mill operation is very simple. I just did a swarf down at the root pass here, and then I used looping to create the three additional passes. On the mirrored side, I've placed another G54 over at this corner to find my mirrored workpiece, and again, the blank is a 50 thousandths offset. Let's get started on the technique. We'll try it uh, in using a simple technique first, and if there's problems, we'll go back and make some changes. So the first thing to do is mirror the toolpath over. So I'll right-click, choose Object Transform, and I'm going to mirror through a plane, and I'm making a, a copy in this case. It prompts me here for a plane, and that's a, a datum plane that I actually already have in this file. Okay, there's my toolpath. However, if I look, I see my engages on this side and retracts over here. That tells me that I'm conventional cutting. I'm going to need to make some changes. Also, the mirrored toolpath showed up over on the original workpiece. Well, I'd like to be able to verify against the mirrored workpiece, so I must drag and drop. You see that it went out of date. There's not much I can do about that, except I will lock the toolpath later. At this time, though, let's solve the conventional cut problem. I'll choose the toolpath editor. And the tool is currently shown in the very first position. With it here, I'm going to reverse the toolpath, and maybe I should explain what I mean. You can show the toolpath at, at any position along here. Uh, I've found that for NX10 anyway, I've got to make sure I'm back at the beginning before I reverse the toolpath. And I'm making a point of this because I've been told that in some of the previous versions of NX, there was sort of a bug with sequential mill, and you had to actually play it to the end and then reverse the toolpath. So this is something that you'll have to look out for. At any rate, in NX10, here we are at the first position, and I choose Reverse. You see the tool moved over. Here's my engages. Here's my retracts. So it looks like it's correct. Well, let's verify and see if we're done. Well, I have a big problem here. It cut the root pass first, and now it's moving up the wall right through material that's already been cut. We probably could have expected this problem because when we simply reverse the toolpath, it's just going from the end back to the beginning. So that should be the expected result. We do have a way to solve this, but we are going to have to start over. I'll delete this operation that we just created, and let's spin back around again. I need to locate the sub-op from which I started the looping. For me, it was this point to point. So I double-click so I see Editing Active, go to Options, loop control, and here's the indication that this is where I started. What I must do is swap the initial and final stock. So my initial stock is 0, my final stock is 0.3. What this is going to do is make it backwards for this operation. Of 
course it prompts for a generate and I click OK. Now I didn't verify that for you but if I had you'd see that this one is wrong. It would be starting down at the root pass and then moving up. Let's go through the steps that we previously went through. I'll right click and transform the operation to the plane. Drag and drop it to the other workpiece. Right click Toolpath Edit. Because this is NX10, I start at the top and reverse. Next, I'm going back to Toolpath and I'm going to lock it just so no one's tempted to try and regenerate after seeing the NOT symbol here. Let's run another verification. And this looks like the correct result this time. So that's a technique for creating a mirrored and reverse toolpath for sequential mill operations.